One hundo. Hey. Folks, welcome to Clash of the Podcast, episode 100. That's right. 100 episodes. Who would have thought that us talking about Vince McMahon and that that pre, like, we were getting ready to do Clash. We were like, we got to talk about this since this news was just announced, to Triple H has taken over to where we are today. And we have the full encompass of all of that stuff happening, and that's where Clash kicked off. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy my brother Sean is here representing Hubbard Wrestling Weekly. I am Conrad Cushman representing everything pro wrestling. We got merch on. If you guys want to order a shirt, great way to support. Made it oh, custom. Day, day one-ish. Listen. If you guys want, another great way to help out is hitting the like button, leaving a review if you're listening on audio platforms. I know I'm real close on Spotify to getting that sponsor number, so a couple five-star reviews would greatly help over there. Do us that favor. Uh, we appreciate every single one of you guys who have rocked with us since the beginning. If you've come in in the middle, it doesn't matter. We appreciate you because you rocked with us. And if you started listening last week, we appreciate you because you rocked with us. Uh, I'll kick it to you, Sean, and then we will uh, start our usual video. Yeah, man. I mean, it's a blessing. A hundred times in a row is it's, it's really something I probably wouldn't even predict it. Um, you know, I thought we would be strong doing this, but, you know, never in my wildest imagination that I think it would be this successful. Um, and the the following that you've received, the, the chat that had become so... Uh, so extremely pivotal to our success is absolutely second to none. I wouldn't trade our audience for any other second rate audience period. Like the more they come in, we appreciate, but there's some like loyal, loyal people in here that uh, interact and share and all that good stuff. So, you know, um, we're thankful. Conrad, I'm thankful for you, brother. And there's only one thing left to say for the 100th consecutive time. Conrad, drop that thing. Man, oh man, it always feels good to hear that music. It's Monday. It's before Raw. We're about to get you hyped. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. Um, first, little promo for coming up this Thursday. This Thursday. Sean, let them know. Yes, sir. Looking forward to this coming Thursday as we bring you the Clash of the Podcast debate show as we talk about WWE. Um, this is a class of the podcast presentation only difference is that it will be um broadcast on the hubbard wrestling weekly channel so myself and Conrad will be your host our guests will be the final boss crystal as well as malik narcolepsy boy 94 we are not going to divulge any personal information we just want to uh say to uh pro wrestling shoots jesse god bless you uh, and we look forward to, to you being with us very soon. But this Thursday night, make sure you tune into the Hubbard Wrestling Group Channel, 835 Eastern Standard Time. Conrad, myself, host, along with Crystal and Malik. And tomorrow, Tuesday, please make sure you check out the Hubbard Wrestling Group Channel as Hubbardnomics Volume 13 will feature none other than the reigning AEW World Tag Team Champions, the Young Bucks. I know, Conrad. I know. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. I'm putting the link to uh, Hub's channel. It's going to be popping up any second in the chat. Uh, as usual, even if you don't super chat, we do try to run down everybody. Thank you to all who have ever super chatted, given us something. It's going to be a real thankful episode. So if you don't want to hear that stuff, too bad. Thank you. And Conrad, also, we have to make an announcement that during that Clash of the Podcast presentation on Thursday night, will be a special pay-per-view code giveaway brought to you by our friends at Triller TV. So even more of a reason to tune in Thursday night, 835. 835, be there. Yes, sir. 
let's start off with the only Vinny we like. Vinny like in the building. Vinny says, Happy Monday. I'm going to SummerSlam with my friend from college. Looking forward to Roman's return, hopefully. God bless y'all as always. Vinny, we appreciate you. God bless you. Have a good time and be safe. Make sure that uh, that, that return happens. It's, it's going to be needed. Going to be needed. Yes, yes. My man Doug, teach him how to Dougie. He says, 100th Monday in a row. Almost two full years, you guys rock. EP dub, H dub dub. Teach. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. Doug, we appreciate you, my guy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Doug. Uh, Sir Quills is in the house. He said, What up, Conrad? Sean, chat. Your boy, Sir Quills, is back again to enjoy my two favorite bro, bros, excuse me, CJ and Hubs, for the historic 100th episode of of uh, the best wrestling podcast out today, Clash of the By God podcast. Kyra and Sean, congratulations on achieving this feat. Uh, you two brothers may continue to be blessed and give us many episodes in the weeks to come and years to come. Quilly, we appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. The, the support is um, it's actually it's actually very moving, the support. We appreciate it. He continues. He says, as a loyal member of the chat, I'm proud to be a significant presence to this feat with my informative analysis or off-the-wall comments, LOL. Thank you, too, for letting me spread my voice. Uh, he puts our hashtags in there, and then he also says, and by the way, for you, Hubs, WWE does not care about you. I know they don't, Quilly. Thank you, man. <laughs> Appreciate Quills, man. Always a good homie to watch and talk wrestling with, man. Uh, shout out to Ray Thompson, another supporter. Says, happy Monday, guys. Congratulations on hashtag 100. Let's freaking go. Appreciate Yo, Ray, it. Ray surprised me, man. Um, Clown surprised me a couple weeks ago. His uh, wife, well, want to put a shirt for me and Ray out of nowhere just sends me a message and says, yo, check it out. Bought his hub merch uh, from the Threadless website, man. You can get that real easy through hwwweekly.com. Yo, Ray, thank you, man. The support is, is touching, man. Thank you, sir. Keep it up, Ray. We appreciate you, family. Clown is up next. Good afternoon, everyone. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you are doing better than this guy who has COVID for the second time. I'm sorry to hear that, clown, and it is kicking my backside good. It's all right, clown. Here at Clash of the Podcast, we believe in uh, in healing from the big man upstairs. So we send that good energy and prayers your way for a speedy recovery. Um, just another example that this pandemic is not over. Um, but clown, get well soon. God bless you, man. Get well, clown. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can ease some of the pain listening to us talk wrestling. Um, man, I think Ray's putting his predictions in the chat. He, he's hyped for SummerSlam coming up. Uh, Joel in the house as well. Hey guys, oh, what's up, up Joel? Thank you, Joel. Order. Thank you, man. Thank you. Joel always drops a nice super chat in the beginning. Always comes in with some informative analysis. We appreciate you, Joel. Thank you so Sorry. much. Thank you. Um. Yes, I love seeing everybody show love to um, Clown in the chat, man. Appreciate you guys. Yes. And more predictions are dropping. I love it. I love it. We'll go through all of them here soon in a second, guys. Uh, Guy Will Gamble said, what up, everybody? It's Monday. It's time for 100. Hope you all are having a happy Monday. Thank you, Guy Will Gamble. Guy Will Gamble, appreciate you, man. Especially your insight on Instagram. Appreciate you. DJ B Tazzy and the house party. Uh, shout out to Tazzy, DJ, and on the West Coast. Uh, I appreciate you, Tazzy. Appreciate your friendship over the years. He says, party people, in my naughty by nature voice, <laughs> love this show because the realism you two show. And yes, before someone asks, my new channel name is influenced by one of my favorite movies, House Party. <laughs> Ain't gonna hurt nobody when you're dancing, y'all. Ain't gonna hurt nobody. Listen, you know how many people send me? <laughs> on the floor. You know how many people sent me class act references for like the past two weeks <laughs> just because I brought it up to him? I was like, yes, great movie. McKinney, uh, he says, yo, I'm here to talk wrestle with the Fire Live chat and the lethal consequences of podcast, clash of the podcast, to let y'all know it's episode 100, and that's 100 quotes for me. Let's go. And he's got one for us right here. Yes. Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. There you go. Hey. McKinney doesn't just drop. This happens to be a little bit funnier, but 
McKinney drops some some knowledge like regularly. Thank you, McKinney. He's also a grill master. If you've never seen him on the, I uh, have. TV. Yes, yes. Send your boy a piece of that chicken one of these times. There Let me go. know. There you go. Let me know. Uh, <laughs> Joel said Gomez. Nah, he he. We gave him. That was when we didn't know. We didn't know fully what was going on back right. then. Yo, shout out to my guy Easy E, man. Uh, I appreciate E, man. We've we've become friends over uh, wrestling and video games, man. So I always appreciate E. I'm putting his channel in the chat as we speak, man. Make sure you show him some love too if you're into wrestling video games as well. Super underrated channel for uh, logging and letting you know the history of wrestling games. Easy, appreciate you. M for the 100th time, by the way. M Lazy Foe. Cheesy. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Hope everyone had a good weekend, and let's kick this off right with the two aces of our pro wrestling community. Thank you, M. Leezy. We certainly appreciate you, man. Might be one of the top social media supporters, man. He gave. Okay. We got two shout-outs this weekend, man. One on Saturday and on okay. Sunday. Top tier. Top tier. Always appreciate you, Matt. Thank you so much. Uh, XGW, hi, happy 100, dudes. Appreciate you, XGW. XGW, another guy that steps up and steps out for the show, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate the crew from over there, man. Thank you guys so much. Um, look at everybody hitting that like button. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm just trying to see if we've missed anything. Um, who else? Ah, oh, Chris. <laughs> the final boss is in the chat. <laughs> Let you know now. Best I behavior. I don't know why. Had. I don't know why I get this feeling every time she comes on the show. Man. Like that's my sister, bro. And it's like she gives me the hardest time, like of anybody. But yet I love her dearly, and I'm so excited. The final boss Thursday, eight thirty-five on the Hubbard Wrestling Channel Clash of the Podcast. She's going to be bringing the heat. And spoiler alert, she is pro WWE. She makes me sick for that, but I love her anyway. Hey, hey. We, Crystal, we appreciate your insight over here. You don't know her like I know her. I've known her like outside, outside. She's a, she's a terror. I love her, but she's a terror. <laughs> the Crystal so, I know, the Crystal I know is sweet as pie. So we appreciate her. Crystal, you know you're the best. I love you, sis. Uh, Clash of the Podcast, best co-host, best live chat ever. Blessed to be here every week. Thank you, man. Wow, thank you, man. Uh, Deanna you. comes in, happy 100th, just yelling it. Deanna, I, like, today is like a retrospective. Deanna is so nice. I remember, I can't, like, probably last week, I think it was. By the way, uh, make sure you tune in every Wednesday, 10, 10 p.m. My guy, Derek and Conrad, host uh, weekly AEW reviews. Last time, I just peek my head in just to say hello because I was out and about. And Deanna, hey hubs, Quilly, hey hubs. Like like I like eight of them. And it was like like the love, man. The love, man. It, it means a lot. Keep it a buck, man. Come in here. Listen, if you listen on Wednesdays, come in on Mondays. Two different shows. I always tell people they're very oh, night different. And day. Night and day for real. Um she said I could go on go all sappy today. Why change? Love both of my wrestling bros. Appreciate it, Deanna. Jocelyn's in the house as well. Coming out of my introvert, hardcore studying to say happy 100th episode to you and Sean. Appreciate everything you both do for wrestling. We appreciate what you do for us, Jocelyn. And I hope that you're having a good time studying. I know that you always work hard. I love that you're in the Discord. And if you aren't in that Discord, you better sign up. I'm tired of yelling at Hubs. He better sign up. I should. Get in that Discord. Right, right. Come talk some pro wrestling with us. We got food in there. We got sports. You can come talk movies, film, TV shows. We got it all in there. I've got a channel for Glee. If you want to talk Glee, I got you, family. Come on in there. There's only been one time that Jocelyn has gotten on my nerves. 99 times out of 100, Jocelyn has been so wonderful. But when the New York Knicks lost to the Indiana Pacers, she got on me heavy. But you know what? I respect it. And Jocelyn, I appreciate you. Man, I'm loving the chat. Wait, man. don't just gloss over that. No, we will not just gloss over that. That's right. And Lazy for Sheezy, love you for that, brother. I will never stop. Jay Uso for world champion. I will never stop. Emlezy, thank you for the support, man. Yo, Quilly, 
and and XG Dub and M Leezy have held the banner for Sean Hubbard and my quest to get Jay Uso a world championship. Even you, my brother from another mother, Conrad, have turned your back on me, and I don't appreciate it. It's not that I've turned my back. I just can't. I can't. I can't, can't believe lie. in this you fallacy. Lie. You can't lie to me. You can't lie I can't to lie me. to myself. I'm right. like, this fallacy is done. Right. Um, let me see here. <laughs> what did Vinny say with a downgraded main event? Cody versus Solo feels like Cena Miz, WrestleMania 27. Kind of, no, that's a pretty good comparison, though. That kind of does. I, I'm not mad at it. B-Boy Skyline, welcome. Why is Cyclops the worst? How dare you? Cyclops was a good X-Men. We go through this every Q&A. Don't bring this up. Cyclops was a good person. He always did what it was the right thing, and then everybody turned on him, turned on him for some riffraff, some miscreant who didn't appreciate the rules that he was trying to set forward. Cut it out. Renegade L2K, did someone say 100? Keep it at 100? You're about to get the boot. God bless, fellas, and congrats. What up, James? James, God bless you, man. We wanted you for Thursday, but we know Thursdays is bad for you. Didn't want you to feel left out. We wanted you, man. And he said, besides SummerSlam, football is back. He's getting hyped for football. Oh, baby. I'm fired up, too. I just got some uh, Bills tickets for a preseason nice. game. Take nice. it. I think it's the kids' day one or whatever for nice. preseason. Enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, taking the intern. Look at you! Got some big money going for you. That's what you have. That's nah, what have these these are the big. cheap. These that's, are the cheap tickets, no, brother. Preseason. That's that. That's that EPW Wednesday night money. I'll show you them Hoover flags real quick. <laughs> put, put the pockets inside out. Tferg79 says, what up, fellas? Hope you guys reach a 1,000 episodes. Drew McIntyre is heel of the year. You ain't telling no lies, Tferg. I, I might have to agree with that. The trolling, Drew McIntyre's made me a believer. The trolling is all time. The guy Will Gamble knows. Ain't no way we slander a Cyclops in the chat. See? Cut it out, B-Boy. Doug, the final boss lady. Yes. That's what I, Crystal, listen. I want you to put that as your name. Put that as your name. It's time to sell Yo, the merch. She won't listen to me. Conrad, you need to tell that girl to get on to, to be more. I, I, know, know. A, I know a thing or two about marketing. If you hey, guys make don't sure you know. Your, make sure you get your EPW merch. Make sure, you, make sure you go out and get that. It's very, very good stuff. But listen, you got to talk to her, man. She needs to get on Twitter. She knows she's not active on Twitter the way she's supposed to be. I tell her she needs to get herself together. Let her know. Let her know. She yeah. says she loves us both and she's happy for us both. Happy 100. Thank, Thank you. you. Look at this. Mike from The Rock. He's in the house. What up, Mike? Put him up. Put him up. See, sweet as pie. She knows. Yeah, sweet as a <laughs> sour patch pie. <laughs> thank you, thank you, and yes, she brings it. Yo, let me tell you something, man. For the record, and we'll see you guys on Thursday. Crystal will rip your throat out. Do not get it twisted. Wow. Uh, uh, thank you so much for being in the chat. I appreciate Lauren it. Lauren Anderson, yes. Yeah, so not, and look with the hearts and every. Oh, that got a little little sugar in here. That's sweet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, and if you don't know, that is the wifey. Don't ever tell anybody that, but that's who that is. God bless. God bless. So thank you so much. Jesse in the house. Happy 100. Who, who, who? Appreciate serious, you. Guys. Serious face. Serious face. Jesse, we love you. We're praying for you. Yes, do your thing, dog, man. Um, I hope everything's all right. If you ever need something, you got my number, man. Hit me yeah, up. Yeah, mine too. We love you, man. Uh, let's see, Matt talking about Ring of Honor. We're going to get into some of that. BJ's in the house, too. What up, BJ? BJ, what up, though? Happy 100. So happy for you all and have loved being on this journey with you. Thank you. Thank you. Mike said Jay Uso for president. Sign me up, Mike. Sign me up, Mike Feezy. Oh, uh, my goodness. Also, your Mets. Hold on here. Who's yeah. a Mets fan? I'm you? a Mets fan. I'm oh, Mets okay. Fan. All right. Yeah. I'll see you for the Subway Series, homie. Yeah, yeah we're, that, looking, we're looking good, man. We're looking good. We're on the we're we're currently hold the third wild card spot. <laughs> he said, "Hamburglar, Mayor McCheese, Ronald, the whole crew needs to appear." Hey, we're, yeah, but right now, if the season ended today, we'd be in the playoffs. Who would have thought that? We started off zero and five. Hey, and and I want everyone to know, B Boy is the biggest like 
superhero fan person I know. All right. So he does a lot of cosplays and all that stuff like wrestlers, whatever you can imagine. He he can get the work done. And uh, I know he's just messing with me here. I don't want y'all to think he's slandering X-Men 97. He loves it. He just likes poking fun. Cyclops or Bill Watson WCW. People didn't appreciate the rules. Or is that Cyclope? Is that what that was supposed to be? I think it was Cyclope. I'll allow it. Anyway, every anyone over Bill Watts. Uh, the definition of insanity clown says to keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. Sadly, that Jay Uso world title run, that ship has passed. Maybe it'll come back around in a few years. I need to clarify something, Conrad. Go ahead. Clown is one of our... Bring that back up for me, brother. Clown is one of my favorite listeners, but Clown got this one wrong. And let me tell you how he got it wrong. I'm not holding on to the banner of Jey Uso winning the World Heavyweight Championship. I, too, have let that ship sail. Ship, S-H-I-P, ship, sail. However, the banner that I will continue to wave of Triple H making poor decisions and playing favorites That is the banner I will continue to wave. I will never, ever stop. My Jey Uso for World Championship uh, quest is based firmly on the fact that Triple H has dropped the ball. And I will never, ever stop. Uh, I'm just letting the live chat know we will take questions. I saw someone just put that up. Um, I, I feel what Clown's saying, though. I think he was just saying, like, we can't. Oh, I, I know. I, I love what he said. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, for clarification, oh, no, I will never stop because Triple H needs to get his stuff together. And I can't wait to unload on Thursday. I'm going to unload a little bit tonight, too, because I think some questions are going to be geared towards that. Um, Let me see here. Uh, and BJ was the one who asked the question about live questions we will do that summer slams card's not that big and then everything else is whatever you guys want i promise you my guy Derek. uh yes he said my guy helps i'm a little far behind here drew is trolling more than mjf that is a fact 100 bj coming back to take his championship how dare you beach how dare you um let me see here can't hate on Cyclops. He bagged every baddie in the X-Men universe. Ah. Play a player. <laughs> uh. <laughs> all right. All right. You got him started on his mess now. That's enough. Uh, Sir Quills, what up? Hashtag Trash Dookie. Y'all might as well sell them shirts, too. <laughs> Terrible. Sour Candy is the best. E, hold on now, bro. Wow. Bill Watts disrespect. He booked Ron Simmons over Vader. So, you want to know what else he did? You you don't want me to start opening up articles and saying what else he did. He's he is not uh, as as cool as he wants to be perceived sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though some people have said they believe he did that to get fired on purpose because he knew they would cut the check, but still not cool. Uh, I don't know. Jay can grab a title. I would, Derek. Maybe they they've had I don't know, I don't know, man. We're we're gonna get into that, I'm sure. Easy E says Triple H can't book. Y'all see the ROH pay per view collision battle of the belts? He could never. Wow, E. Uh, Hub's getting ready to ride the train. No, no, no. Um, hold on. Let me see where you were, Quills. I'm uh, going back up. Here we go. He wanted this red. It's a complete shame that Jay Uso is treated like the. <laughs> No, no, that's real talk, though. Keep keep reading, bro. He's 100% right. Of the WWE, always the nomination slash title match, but can't win. Always the bridesmaid, or what was it? Always the bridesmaid, never never the bride. And and Quilly is 100% right. And by the way, those kind of decisions make me raise eyebrows. I'll just leave it at that. Derek Hubbard says, uh, Jay Uso has not performed up hey. to his push. He is one note. It's a great note, but he has not pushed himself in the ring or on the mic to enter next level. I'm going to defer to my good friend, Sean, because I think of Sean every time someone says this. Or I mean, says first this, of all, me. great last name, by the way, if you want to throw that out there. Um, secondly, like I've said a thousand and one times, bro, at the end of the day, he wouldn't be the first world champion to not have a great move set. And at the end of the day, one word catchphrases 
I have worked in the past. How come it's not working out? For me, it's like picking straws, man. Yes, Jay Uso needs improvement, but also he's super popular. He's super over, and the fans are clamoring for him. So, you know, if you can do it with a leg drop and a big boot, you can do it with a frog splash and a spear. Oh, I like that. I'm going to put that on a shirt. Hey. Hey. Um... No, I, I'm not mad at the uh, top rope stuff. I'll I'll tell I'll tell you after because you might not know what I'm talking about. I'll show you after about Bill Watts and uh, the history behind him. If you know, you know. Oh, uh, don't say that, McKinney. <laughs> don't say that. Not the speed champion. That would be a slap. In the not face. the title they don't show on TV. Right. Um. He said, "You." Uh. That Kayentai push, yeah, that wasn't happening either back then. And that's the uh, one of the excuses a lot of people would like to get into. Um, if you guys got questions, let me know if you're putting them in the chat. We'll do Clash 100. And, and like I said, we'll have a whole segment for it, I promise you. And then you guys can ask whatever you want, old school, video game, whatever questions you guys want that uh, either one of us can answer, even if it's for one of us specifically. It's fine. Cool with me. All right. Let's start this off, Sean. I don't what what match kicks off the show. If you're booking this, what do you kick off the show with? Um I probably go I probably go women's championship, honestly. I probably go Bailey. Really? Yep. All right, we'll start with that. Yep. Bailey taking on Nia Jax. My prediction for this one is wild because it's going to be all based on something that happens on Friday. Can I say this, too? Don't get mad at me, people. Don't get mad at me. But SmackDown's been buns for, like, the last three weeks, right? I ain't telling a lie. All right. I'm just mad. I skipped it this week. I was like, I'm watching Ring of Honor instead because this show hasn't had any juice lately. Um, and why that is, I... No, I said it. They sabotaged the draft. Like, you made SmackDown horrible. So, Bailey is going into this. Um, Tiffany Stratton is friends with Nia Jax. She's carrying around the briefcase. If, all right, here's my theory, Sean. If she comes out with the pink Money in the Bank style briefcase, they have to be able to sell this in time. It's my theory. Right. So, if she comes out with a new briefcase, she's not cashing in. But if it's still that busted up briefcase... I could see a cash in happening at SummerSlam. Well, I mean, I appreciate the analysis and I, I love where you're going with it. I mean, to me, it's plain and simple. Tiffany's definitely cashing in at SummerSlam. I mean, I, to me, it's almost like a done deal. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just saying, if she comes out with that, I guess so she I, I get your theory. I get your theory. I get your, I get your Austin. Yeah. So ba- Bailey can't leave here with the title, is what we're thinking then, right? Nor should she, because as much as I love her, I think she's being booked terribly. It's just her title reign has been has been lackluster. Is there any chance that Nia leaves with the championship? I felt confident about Nia winning this. Like I hope not. Around I Queen of the I don't Rangers. want to see someone who injures people the champion. I mean, by the way, that was one of the greatest promos I've ever heard. That line by Bailey on SmackDown made my heart sing. I missed it. She was saying she was like, "You injure people." She said it on a one-on-one promo. She was like, you injure people. Um, you're reckless is the word she used. And I loved it. I was like, they put that in the storyline? Thank God. Interesting. I will say this, though. She's improved her safety on the bonsai drop. I see her bracing herself more. Okay. So I'm going to rock with you. I'm going to say there's a cash in. I don't know why. It just feels like it's in my soul. Her being friends with Naya, I should have seen this coming before. Like, she's going right. to win the briefcase, but... I'll take it a step further. Bailey wins. Nia gets mad. Nia does multiple bonsai drops. Then Tiffany catches it. And then the feuds Tiffany and Nia going forward? Well, not really. She's going to help Tiffany win the title. Uh, I'm saying after the match. Nia loses. I'm looking at the long-term play. I hear you. Yeah, Nia loses, gets angry. Bonsai drops barely three or four times, and then here comes Tiffany with the cash. Interesting. Interesting. Um, let me see here. Uh, I definitely think uh, he'll get the title before the tags. I don't know, Derek. They're back on Jay Uso here at the top of this. 
it is about the move set. It is about putting your package together in a way, but uh, building a compelling match. Jay can do this at an acceptable level, but not at a main event level. I'm going to disagree now. Vinny says Bailey's run has been mid. I think they've it's been mid because they made it feel mid. They booked it mid, yeah. Yeah, you can't have her win the Royal Rumble and then say, "Oh, you're not on the poster." Ah, you're billed. We'll get to it eventually. You can't you can't book her like that. Like I don't know. To me, this has been kind of an unfair reign for her. Um, it just sucks, man. And Matt says the same thing. Bailey gets no love, man. So underrated. Underrated, like you said, because how she's being booked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, James says SmackDown has been buns. <laughs> Tiffy has. time at SummerSlam. Mike says. Agreed. Um, McKinney knows. McKinney knows. ROH blew SmackDown to, out of the to the other side of the country. Dang. Max. Quill says I have a feeling there's going to be some weird stuff in the match. Nia Jax may dethrone Bailey, but you got to look out for Tiffany Stratton and the Money in the Bank briefcase. Nia could win this, and then they wait to cash it in even later on too. Facts. Facts. Because I feel like Nia Jax has gotten better. Uh, I I feel the same way. She she wasn't as like when she left that last run. That I'll just remember that match with Charlotte. Do you remember that where they were throwing real of blows course. at each other? Of that that was just awful. I was like, "What are we doing here?" But the time off seemed to help her a little bit. Um, uh, like I said, she still needs help, but I think that she's trying to do better. Um, let me see here. If Tiffany cash, if wait, if it's a cash in, Tiffany wins. If not, Bailey wins. Mm. Okay. Uh, man, a lot of people are in here just giving their thoughts. I'm just trying to get the people who haven't seen something from or let Tiffy think she's winning and stop her before the three could do that. I don't think there's any scenario, though, on a side note. I don't think there's any scenario where she casts in during the match. Right. Uh, it, won't be, why, it won't be a triple threat. Cloud's, Cloud has a question. Why does Nia get hit with uh, she's injuring people, but Seth got a pass after he hurt Finn, Sting, and he broke Cena's nose? Over many, I mean, I would. I'm only speculating. I don't give a pass to anybody who injures people, but I'll I'll say that maybe Seth's situations have happened. No, no, maybe about it. Seth's situations have happened over a many course of many years. Meanwhile, Nia's were kind of bump, you know, kind of bumbled together, kind of bunched together. So it kind of stands out a little bit more. Also, on um, I think the Sting one was kind of a a freak, a freak accident. A freak accident, yes. And. I've heard from another wrestler because around the time I, I forgot who I interviewed, I can't even remember who it was. That power bomb to Finn Balor. Anytime people go back and watch this, you're gonna look at this every time because this wrestler told me to watch this. Watch how Finn goes back. What Finn was supposed to do was trust Seth to throw him, and what he did instead was he tried to put his arm back like this to do it, and that's how he got injured. Right. So just putting it out there. Um. Let me see here. <laughs> Uh, did they do this for Bailey when she was open for a resigning period? If not, I'd uh, be gone after this deal is up. They have completely treated her like a nobody. I mean, you're the world champion, BJ, which I agree with what you're saying. He, she is the world champion, so that means she's the number one or two woman in the company. But the way she's been booked has been putrid. So I wouldn't be upset at her if she was frustrated and decided to do something else. And Matt Lopez is reminding us Charlotte is returning now for her in-ring comeback, and he says Charlotte in the bank incoming. (laughs) Whatever her new music is this week. Let's get to the U.S. title match. Logan Paul, L.A. Knight. Yeah. Um, How you feeling on this one? Sean, I'm going to let you kind of preface this. How? What are your thoughts right now going into this? I think LA Knight's very fortunate that they didn't Jay Uso him. Because... What do you mean? He only has to defend the belt how many times? Two, three times in nine months? No, no, I'm talking about, I'm talking about LA Knight. <laughs> You're right. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm yeah. on Logan Paul. I'm on, I'm on my hater mode right now. <laughs> I think LA Knight is really fortunate they didn't Jay Uso him. And what I mean by that is because he was about to lose steam too. And they just caught fire once again. It's almost time, like, to me, you have to win. Meaning LA Knight. LA Knight has to win this match or it's over, just like with Jay Uso. 
Um, I really. You, you know what, though? I have a worry, though, about this. Logan Paul's lost the last couple of matches he was in while he wasn't defending the title. Which means he's going to win it at the paper. I think they're going to try and stretch this out for another show at least. Do you think do you, do you think there's too much fear to have the steam? LA Knight doesn't win here. No, I don't the think gone. No, I'm, fear? No. I, I don't think Triple H gives a crap about it. Like, to me, fear would insinuate, oh, I hope we don't lose steam. I hope we do capitalize. Triple H has proven he's not that guy. Triple H doesn't care what the fans want. So maybe he will have Logan Paul win just for the sake of wanting Logan Paul to win. Triple H doesn't care about the fans. I said it. Now I'll continue to say it. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I don't know, man. I want LA Knight to win, but something in my mind is telling me to pick Logan Paul. I'm going to go with my heart, man. I'm going to pick LA Knight. I'm picking Logan Paul. Okay. Because and I wouldn't be mad. Like like I said, I probably convinced people now finally to think like, oh, he might win this. But yeah, I'm thinking Logan Paul because I don't trust Triple H. Isn't that a sad day, folks? Sad day. Speaking of first, Sean, first time Sami Zayn's ever wrestled on SummerSlam. He was on the pre-show once before in like 2016 or 17. Sami Zayn versus Braun Breaker for the Intercontinental title. For all those who laughed about the Jay Uso comments, meet his other brother in booking, Sami Zayn, who is dealing with some of the similar things if you're a fan of his. Um, all that for the guy who is on the right that I'm looking at right now, Braun Breaker. Uh, Braun Breaker is who they are focused on. Braun Breaker is who they see big potential future. I told people a long time ago when he first entered NXT, this is who they're going to try and main event WrestleMania with. It's up to him if it's a downward spiral or whatever they're going to do. They like him a lot. He's got the old school physique. He does everything that that they want out of a pro wrestler. He's got the build. He moves quickly. They love it. They love it. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I think Braun Breaker wins the match. Um, I think he's done something I didn't think he would do, which has impressed me. I really was not a fan of his coming out of NXT. And he's really improved since he's been to the main roster. One of the rare instances, one of the rare instances where somebody came from NXT and got better, which is something that I have not seen before, i.e. Nakamura, i.e. you know many others, right? So I'm really thrilled with his progress. I think him and Dragunov have had a really good run. Um, and I think the match with Sammy will be good. And obviously, the writing's on the wall of Sammy and Jay are going to reunite in the bloodline. So you got to take the title off of them. Whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the majority here. Braun Breaker wins. I think it's just the right call to give him that, that slower push. Um, Vinny said that Breaker should have won last month. I think that was a test. This is WWE, right, Sean? Do you believe that they do all these things as a test? I think that this was the test. Are you going to lose to someone if I tell you to? Yeah, sure, no right. problem. We'll see what kind of we'll see what kind of professional he is. All right. Well, you also don't want people to get on cloud nine because Vinny brings up another good point. He said Breaker is getting that Lesnar O2 push. I don't think they like giving people that push anymore. Right. Lesnar burned them very quickly. Uh, because when did he leave? Two years later. Yes. What did you get out of him? Yeah, he was gone by the by two years, two two years to the day. He started the day after WrestleMania in O two, and he left WrestleMania of O four. Yeah, and was it worth it? I don't think so. If he never came back, I don't think it would have been worth everything they gave him. No, he wouldn't. Have. So, uh, people are saying here comes the squash. Uh, Quill says Braun Breaker beats Sammy here or dethrones Sammy here, which is a shame because it should have been Chad Gable, and I personally prefer Ilya Dragunov. And Ilya might be the guy to eventually defeat him, too, later on down the road. Uh, Braun is freeing Sammy up for the bloodline feud. Yep. That's everyone's consolation. Like, yep, here, here's the bloodline feud for you. So, and, and I said it, that that's, that's what they're going to end up doing with a lot of this. I could see him and Jay teaming up more after this, even. Um, if LA Knight doesn't win, they'll be missing uh, the boat again. I understand what Paul brings to the table with his socials, but the era of the part-time champ has ran its course out on LA now. Hey, 
maybe. There's that clip of Braun running the rope so hard that the ring shifted. It was a, a tag match with people on the apron, and the ring still moved. Yeah. Right. Uh, he's a beast. He's oh, a sure. beast. Breaker fought to WrestleMania 48 main event in 2032. 100. I like that. Breaker wins so Sammy can help Jay. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, people. No, go off. This is your time. I need the real Sean Hubbard to come out. This is episode 100, darn it. Look at me. I want you to go off. Say how you feel, truly. I don't even think you get this, Conrad. Um, probably do, but maybe 1% chance you don't. And I'm sure the, the our wonderful fans don't either. This Jay Uso thing really makes me not want to watch wrestling. Like, the political BS that has been shown and the favoritism that has been shown. Like, I want you guys, everybody, the Vinnies, the Emlezies, the Quillies, the everybody's, you know, uh, Deanna's and, you know, McKinney's. And I want you all to take out my fandom. Clearly, I'm a Jay Uso fan. Clearly, I was a major fan of the Usos, right? And we'll be again. And we'll be again. What they've done to Jay Uso is a slap in the face to the professional wrestling industry. I don't think you guys understand. Like, it literally makes me sick to watch him come out and, and be in the mid card. It, it, it really does. I know people talk about his lack of in ring prowess. He wouldn't be the first to be world champion. I'm not going down that road again. I want you guys to really, really listen to what I'm saying. Because even though I've said it before, I'm going to say it with so much seriousness that I don't want to cloud it with any kind of theatrics. And this is for you too, brother. Jay Uso earned the right to win a championship over the past 12 months. And whether it was Triple H, Paul Levesque, whether it was Bruce Pritchard or whoever else they had running the ship, somebody, and I want you guys to really internalize what I'm saying. Somebody, despite, despite seeing that this guy deserved it, made a conscious effort to say no. I'm going to say it again for the people in the back. Despite the fact that Jay Uso has earned it by being, right, Conrad? And check me out now. I'm going to say something I've never said before. By being the bloodline's Breakout star by being the bloodlines breakout star. Somebody said, I see you, for lack of better terms, I acknowledge you, but the answer is no. And not only was the answer no. Chat, fill me on this, bro. This is not Sean Hubbard. The This is Sean. This is real, real me right now. Real life. Business. So not only do you say no about winning at least the Intercontinental Championship, you put him in multiple championship matches and have him lose. My question to you is this, and the question is rhetorical. What happens when you lose title match after title match after title match? You lose steam and the fans get tired. And Road Dog tells you wins and losses don't matter. So don't think this is because I like to yeet and it's because I like hip hop music and because Jay Uso seems like somebody I'd probably hang out with. 
which is all probably true. He seems like somebody that me and Conrad would hang out with and turn up with. No, this is about real life, behind the scenes crap. Jay Uso internalized this, guys. Jay Uso earned it, and Triple H said no. And my question is, why? I th- I think it falls back onto what Sami Zayn said, Sean. His vision is set. There is no changing the vision. I I don't care if you get over. I already wrote what we're doing. Mm-hmm. This is done. And that's how Sami Zayn feels. And it's weird that there's now multiple people. Listen, this ain't going to be sunshine and rainbows forever. I know everybody's like, yes, WWE's the place. They might get Motor City machine guns. And I hope they do. They need help in the tag division. Don't get me started. By the way, where's the women's tag title match? I don't want to say something that I've noticed about the car, but I want y'all to take a deep look at this car. Take a deep look at God dog it. Something's missing. Oh, Conrad. Conrad. I'm just. Episode I'm a, 100, brother. Take I a deep look at that daggone card for me, please. And tell me what's missing. I'll keep going through it here. And Vinny's right. The Roman and Jay forgive the story will be so good. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, and, and I think Sean sees it too. Yes, but we've been here so many times. Yes, Rob Van Dam was on the Alliance side. Yes, Rob Van Dam got over. When did Rob Van Dam get his reward finally? It was four years later. No, but it was, was it Triple H hurt at that time too? Triple yeah, H I think so. Why did you wait? He was hot as fish grease in 02. Why did you wait? Like just certain things. Hot as white. Hot as white. You like that, huh? Fish grease. My brother. Pop, pop. Fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. That's Alka Seltzer. But my point still stands. Why didn't you do it? And it go. E said something. Hold on, let me go back to E. He said something. Why, that why, I you, why you look up the comment, Conrad? People think that I'm just like, oh, you're a Jay Uso fan here, so you're tight. No, it's so much deeper than that. No, I, listen. I'm being Triple H isn't easy. I get it. Like being right, a Booker, right. you got to hear ten thousand people say I'm the best, and this is why I should be in the spot. But right. at the same time. There is, you have to strike while the iron's hot. There are times where you're like, you know, let's wait. You can make people wait. There ain't no more waiting with Jay Uso. I think you've lost, you've lost me at least. And I'm not as big a fan as Sean, but you lost me. I was like, if you don't give him money in the bank, he's it's done. Over. It's over. He's stuck in the storyline. And then what else is there left to do? He has to unite with his brother. What are you going to say? Like, thanks, Oos. I'm out after this. No, they're going to be like, we might as well get back together as a tag team because that's where the money is. Or they'll make him feel bad for Jimmy and they'll just be like, well, Jimmy's not doing so hot by himself. Well, I got to help my brother out. You know what I'm saying? You put him in a bad position. I'm in a so. bad spot. So that, you know, that's a little bit of a little, little extra, you know, because honestly, um, you know, it comes across like, yo, you're just a fan, so you're tight because your guy's not winning the belt. Nah, man. Th- this is very symbolic. And, and I didn't even bring it up. Thank you, Conrad. Look at the card, bro. Look at the card. Uh, we're not even going to tell you what's missing. Yeah. Connect the dots. Out. Figure it out, guys. Figure it out. Corey, be elite. We don't, we, don't, we don't play around on this show. We tell the truth. Sometimes we throw some jokes and have fun. Y'all want to be real? Let's be real. Corey B. Elite says, I think they're holding off on him to be a part of the bloodline stuff, which would be horrible. Appreciate you, Corey. Thank you, Corey. He said, what happened to Omos this week? Why do you think uh, Lashley and the homies are out, man? Him and MVP. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Uh-oh. BJ, go ahead. Give it to him, Conrad. Hey, uh, listen, uh, we're going to give you a singles run now. Uh. But no title, uh, just a catchphrase. You'll be the man who says yeet. Yo, fairly accurate, BJ. Fairly accurate. Top five t-shirt seller. Like, listen, numbers don't lie. That's the one thing I hear from fans all the time. Numbers, 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 numbers. You ain't using them for this? Nobody gives a crap. But clearly, clearly, it's only Matt's, one. Matt said, what tag division? 100. That's what they're going to use him to save. And they're going to say, you'll be the king of this castle, the tag division. Uh, I didn't say it. Guy Will Gamble did. 
just wanted to let y'all know. Uh, you got to remember, this is WWE, regardless of who's running the show. It'll always uh, hey, hey. Oh, yeah, facts, bro. Facts. Quilly, facts. You have hometown guy Gargano defending his title on SmackDown and not SummerSlam. Also disgusting. Also ridiculous, M. Leezy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm so sick and tired of people saying Triple H is doing a great job. Triple H is doing okay, but Triple H plays favorites. I don't, I, you know, I don't understand why people don't see. Well, people do see it. Some people see it. Some people don't. Let me see here. I remember uh, jail jail felony. I can give you to you about what you're gonna do with it. <laughs> uh, Jay has main event at every big four pay per view since 2020. That's not the point, Vinny. You know, you're my guy. That's not the point. So gold yeah. matters, credentials matter. This was five minutes ago, too, for the record. Oh, yeah, no I doubt. Behind. I like Vinny. Vinny's my guy. Uh, let's see here. Jay Uso has big plans, but this is a hot storyline. What's missing? Uh, figure it out, Joel. I, I'm actually excited for SummerSlam. So, I mean, how can look, look. CM Punk, Seth, and, and Drew, how can you not be excited? I'm not saying it's a crappy show. I'm saying let's not say Triple H is the greatest booker of all time. I said I love the realism. Vinny said, in all honesty, if SummerSlam didn't have the potential woman return, I wouldn't go to the card as underwhelming as a first Tinder date. Ooh, I like Vinny with the words. Okay, player. Uh, Derek says he hears you, but he disagrees. I think it's on the, the About- part of the J stuff. Yeah, clarify that for me. What part of it do you disagree with, bro? Uh, let me see. Prince Rockstar coming in. Triple H doing a horrible job. Bianca and Jay get their title match on SmackDown instead of SummerSlam. That's where all the tag matches happen. Yep. Uh, which means they will not get the titles to make it worse. Naomi and Blair Davenport are in the mix. Six woman tag coming. I think I think they give them back to Bianca and uh, Jay. Yeah, they'll SmackDown. win it on SmackDown, which won't mean much. Yeah. Uh, Joel says, can't get excited for AEW lately. I don't think all oh, has I, the same I, I, I understand why you can't do it. I know why you can't do it, Conrad. Oh, my God. I know why you can't do it, but I want you to do it, but I know why you can't do it. Oh, Mike Feezy, I see you, bro. Yeah. Mike Feezy, behind the scenes, we see you, bro. Oh, my God. We can't do it, though. We got we to gotta stay on the air, but Mike Feezy, we see you, bro. Let's get to the oh, uh, Conrad. Oh, Conrad. Oh, go ahead. let's get to the world heavyweight championship match: Damian Priest versus Gunther. Um, this has had some people feeling a certain type of way about how they've booked this. Mm-hmm. I feel like now people are just starting to come around to Priest. Like you know, he's not so bad on the mic. Maybe they could. I, I think that it's time. I think we're going to see a huge Judgment Day split on this night. And Priest is out, man. I just I just don't see. Gunther has to win this championship. I don't, I think he's going into Berlin as the champion. I'm sad. I'm sad because I'm torn between a guy who I think has earned his chance and earned his right to be world champion and Damian Priest. And a guy who is, in my opinion, the most deserving guy on Raw right now. Um, I want Priest to retain. I just find it so difficult, so difficult to see Gunther not walk into Berlin as champion. Although, I'm still going to pick Damian Priest to win. Maybe there's a chance it'll be a rematch and he wins it in Berlin. And that means Priest wins at SummerSlam. That's the only thing I can hold on to. I don't know. I don't know if you guys feel the same way. Uh, uh, Pro Wrestling Shoe says, I'm personally not hating on the card or his booking, been enjoying it. We, uh, we agree. We halfway agree, Jesse. I like the card. I don't like his booking. The card is the card's like a 7 out of 10. Yeah. the It's the other underlying issues that we're talking about, things that are missed. And then, like I said, why is your whole tag division wrestling on the show before? You couldn't find one tag match? Like, DIY's match wasn't incredible when they won the titles? Like, I, I don't know. I don't get it. Um, Derek says, if gold matters and credentials matter, I need a caliber of matches in order oh, to Derek, I hear you, man, but you can't tell me 
You can't tell me there hasn't been world champions that weren't able to put on a great match. You can't check off. Look, everybody's not. Mr. Bob Backlund, Come how on, you doing? Bro. Come on, bro. Everybody, you know, what? this is a good question, Conrad. I'm going to say The Rock, a guy who checks all the boxes, in-ring, promo, merchandise. Like, there's not too many guys that check all the boxes, right? Jay Uso does not check all the boxes, but when you sell more T-shirts than anybody else, at least for a couple weeks at a time, and the and you're over with the fans like Rover. I mean, like I said, I've said these names a few times: Hogan, Cena, Austin. Even though Austin, I want to say this on the air. Good point, Conrad. The only reason Austin did not have a great move set in WWE is because he was recovering from neck surgery. So I give him credit, but still remains. People have been world champion without a crazy move set. It's not even just that. This goes back to CM Punk's point from 2011. Come back with me, folks. Come back in time for a second. What do I need to do to be the world champion? When someone asks that question, okay, you need to sell as many shirts as John Cena. You need to do as many make-a-wishes as John Cena. Do you know what the real problem was? You were never going to let anybody get above that ceiling. He did all that. He sold the most shirts. That CM Punk shirt, I'll tell you this. The top legendary shirts of all time. I'll probably give you top five right now if I can think of them. Hulkamania shirt. Austin 316 shirt. NWO. NWO. DX and that CM Punk shirt. I've seen many people wearing them out and about on a normal day. Not when there's a pay-per-view in town where you just bust out your wrestling shirt. I'm talking walking down the street. Going, going to the supermarket. Yeah, I'm going to the store. And I was like, oh, that's right. Best in the world. And people would just give you the fist bump like, yes, yeah, my guy, CM Punk, man. And I was like, wow, I didn't know there were that many wrestling fans. So trust me, he did. He checked all those boxes and they still were like, ah. You're Macho Man to me. You're the number two. You can tag with Cena. No, that's not what I wanted. But, you know, that's that. I don't know. I, what do you tell someone then? No, nobody's happy with just being there. These guys have competed all their lives for in the indies. You don't think someone was like, man, dude, you're just the mid card guy. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this then? In like, if somebody, time, and, let's, and let's not continue with Jay Uso. Anybody, if you're a pro wrestler, to piggyback off of Conrad's point, if you're a pro wrestler and you knock on Triple H's door and you say, I want to be world champion, what more can I do? Well, we know that you're selling a lot of T-shirts and we know the fans love you. You're not terrible in the ring, even though you need a little bit of help. And you're believable. I don't know what you can do. I just don't think you're there yet. What? What does that even mean? Welcome to the world of pro wrestling. And, and and it doesn't help either that there's a million people that are super over right now, too. Right. It, it, it's tough, but he still gets one of the loudest reactions. If he's top five anything, that means there, there ain't everybody ain't better than him. There you go. There you go. And, and that goes for, I, I think that for Sami Zayn, too. A lot of people don't want to say it. I'm like, he ain't bad. People are still behind him for and a let, And let me ask you this. And I have really jumped onto the Conrad side of the bandwagon. I'm going to stop hating on Sami Zayn because he doesn't deserve to be hated on. But I'm going to ask you guys a question. I'm going to ask you guys a question. In WrestleMania season this past year, who was more popular, Jey Uso or Sami Zayn? Who did they decide to get to let break the streak? Sami Uso, Sami Uso. Sami uh, Zayn or Jey Uso? I mean... If you ask Triple H that question, I bet you he couldn't even tell you why. There's there's no there's no compelling reason why he would say, I don't know, I just don't think Jay Uso could have beat Gunther. Okay, whatever. And I think that was what Derek's point is too, though. They did give him that big moment with his brother, and I think they thought it would have delivered a little bit better, but he's delivered in other instances, though. Mike C, do you think Sami Zayn is better than was more popular April of 2024 than Jay. Nobody arguably in the industry was more popular than Jay Uso other than like Roman Reigns and, and Cody Rhodes. Now, if we were talking WrestleMania 39, I will agree, but this is 40 we're talking. Yeah, we're talking about 40, not not 39. 
Uh, BJ, I want to read what he says here. My biggest problem is there's such a rare unknown in the Triple H booking. The ones are surprising, are never in the important stories, and often feel like it was just done to do it. Interesting. Card-wise, I think this year was better than last year. I should have waited, <laughs> Doug says. Priest versus Gunther was weird to start because at the end of the day, they're both heels. But now uh, with the street trash comments, Priest is now the baby face. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, Jay's matches with Reigns were good enough for me. There's plenty me of compelling opponents. Yeah, listen, when they first did it, I was scratching my head. I was like, what are we doing here? But, you know, they tried something new and it worked. I'm not going to lie. It worked. Uh, I think they want Jacob and who is that? I think it's supposed to, is that Tonga Loa maybe? Yeah, Tonga Loa. Or Tama Tonga, I think it's supposed to be walking to the okay. arena with Solo and the tag belts on their shoulders. That's why the match is happening this Friday. Bullet Club has to be on that list. I don't think they're thinking about Bullet Club. Honestly, I don't even think they have plans for AJ and Nakamura. I think they're going to be the guys they loan out. Uh, look at it like this. If you're a D2 school beating up on everyone in your division, referencing the tag division, and you play a D1 school and lose twice, talk about uh, Roman. Do you deserve to be in the tournament? Oh, that Derek. Derek, what? That doesn't make any sense, brother. Listen, Derek, <laughs> I've never disagreed with Derek so much ever. Nobody was going to beat Roman Reigns in the summer of 2023. Nobody. It didn't. I mean, just Jay being in the main event was a, was a success. He shouldn't have lost to Seth Rollins, and he shouldn't have lost to Gunther. Period. Period. But summer of twenty twenty three, nobody was gonna, nobody was gonna be Roman Reigns in the summer. Of At that point, by twenty twenty one, I want to say or twenty two, you had it to the point to where it had to be the right guy to beat Roman. It just couldn't yeah, be anybody. It anymore. couldn't be anybody at that point, right? Even I was like, Jay should win in SummerSlam, and Conrad was like, Sean. You have to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't. You can't do that. Yeah. You just can't. Um, no bullet club on the t-shirt list. Oh, b- uh, bullet club for top five shirts. Yeah, yeah. I I saw a lot of those. That might be like in top ten. I would argue it. Yeah, bullet club sold a lot of t-shirts. Listen, and I'm and I'm tired of telling people this too. Attitude era. I know people are like. Yeah, the wrestling wasn't that good. They had some pretty bad storylines and stuff. I get it, but wrestling was never hotter, bro. I promise you. It like wasn't. everyone talks about how hot it is now. No, them ticket prices are just super high. It's a premium thing now to go to WWE. Like you have to love wrestling to go. The attitude era was hot, bro. If you went to school with me and Sean did and you didn't watch Raw, it's over. No one's talking exactly. to you. No exactly. one's talking to you on Tuesday. Nobody. It's a rap Rizzy. Like, oh, you didn't see the way Females, match? like like girls in our class were talking about WWE in, in the 90s. Yeah, they were like, oh, I saw that match with Juventud Guerrera and Disco uh, Inferno on Nitro. I'm like, how are you watching Nitro? Who in your house watched? My dad was watching it, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, and then Hulk Hogan and them came out, and they spray painted someone's back, and I'm like, "How do you know this?" Like, it was just different. And I was a fan before then. Like, I was talking about, "Oh, did you see Royal Rumble '94 with Bret Hart and Lex Luger both going over the top rope?" I was a real wrestling fan. Like, yeah, ain't no way. 100. Moving on. Moving on. The love story of a oh, lifetime. God. Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, and Dirty Dom. Sean, where are they going with this? I know where they're going with this, man. What do you think? Dominic is going to turn on Rhea Ripley. I cannot wait. And Dom is going to be the biggest. If he's not the biggest heel already, Dom. And you know who else I think has something to do with this? Finn. I think Finn Balor is going to help. There's something going on there, too. He had that room key. Six in the morning. Yeah. The but morning. some people, I see what you know, I want to give a shout out to Easy. Some people are, are thinking this is kind of like a trashy storyline. Well, listen, can I be Conrad businessman for a second? Yeah, sure. Let me put, where's my, let me act like I'm actually interviewing for this. If I was your PR guy, I would have been like, I don't think we should be doing this, guys. Right. Right. Because it shows you're not sensitive towards the issues that you have litigation coming up for. The Me Too movement. Not even me too. This is just stupid. Because right. when you go to court, I would be like, "Let me show you how this company feels." Exhibit A, Your Honor. Wow. Um, yeah. W- look at how they really feel about people. They often mask their storylines and things, and then they're going to show. Look at me bragging about beating the federal government. Click. Look at me bragging about this. Click. 
Oh, I made someone do this. Click. Didn't he treat women like this on TV? Click. I would not give wow. them fuel. You're That's right, dumb. You're dumb. right. Dumb. But I'm just here to be a fan for a second. <laughs> so Man. as a fan, okay, they're doing the same old stuff. You know what I mean? It, it's what it is. Um, it's the hottest storyline right now on Raw. No, I take that back. Second I hottest. Think, yeah, CM Punk and Drew is the hottest. But the second hottest storyline on Raw. It's interesting. I saw a lot of people talking about Liv last week. I know you know what I'm talking about, Matt. <laughs> I know you know what I'm talking about. Look, Liv is a very – look, let's be professional. Liv is a very attractive young lady, right? But but is that – is that putting her in the echelon of being respected as a women's athlete by showing herself off? I don't think so. I think it's more about trying to get over and tell whatever part of the story you're going to tell is. And I think it's honestly, Sean, this is real life stuff. Yeah. I want you to just chat, run with me here for a second. You're on the block. You're going to the store. You're about to get yourself a red huggy. I don't know what you're going to drink, but you're getting your favorite drink at the corner store. And you're like, yo, this dude, his girl's been catching him, and he's on social media posting stuff. She's cussing him out in front of the store. I don't even know this girl. I don't even like her. I hate you. Why are you in front of me? But then in a couple of weeks, you're going to see dude talking to her again. Hey, how you doing? What's going on with you? Hey, you want to buy me a honey bun? What are they doing? You know what happens with this stuff. And that's what I think they're trying to portray. It's just there's a... There's a way to do it. And that's what they want this to. This is soap opera. This is like, this is the messiness that people love when you watch Catfish. Can I give you a storyline? Can shows. I give you a storyline comparison? Go ahead. Christian, Jericho, Trish. E- Eddie in China. Yeah. Well, Ed, no, Eddie in China is the obvious one. We all, I, that goes without saying. But the triangle between when everybody thought that Trish was in love with Jericho and then it turned out to be like, I think it's going to be switched. I think it's going to be a switcher rule. Interesting here. I'm just looking. Dom needs to do an Eddie and turn on both for the gold. I don't know if you could do that. I'm not going to cap, though. Like, I'm actually, as much as I'm down on WWE right now, like, I'm actually intrigued to see what happens because I feel like Finn turning on them would be pretty dope. Hold on. Wherever Jesse is, I want you to write this down and mark it. Raw is the best brand in WWE. Three hours is still insufferable. I will never change my stance on that. But Raw is the best brand in WWE, followed by SmackDown. McKinney, write this down. Or, or excuse me, followed by NXT. NXT is the second best brand. SmackDown is unbearable to watch. It is awful. It is hashtag trash dookie. I got Liv Morgan winning this match. I think Dominic accidentally cost her. I don't think we're going to get the full payoff yet. I think it's going to happen on Raw. You can't give everything a payoff on SummerSlam. I think we get the payoff. I think they're gonna push the chips in the middle of the table. Wow. I think we're gonna get I think I think Liv obviously retains. We're on the same page, but I think it's gonna be on purpose. Man. And Quills is and I, but, I'm, but I'm unclear though. I'm unclear about what's gonna happen on purpose. Something's gonna happen on purpose. Either Dominic or Finn Balor. Man. Do you think Liv what if okay, here's a here's another twist. What if Liv's just using him? That's what I'm thinking. I'm but, thinking but, but you get you get what you said though before, like the oh she's just showing off her stuff. She's playing you, bro. She used you. Yep. Matter of fact, I'm glad you said that because now I can tell you how the match is gonna end. Dominic screws over Rhea. Liv says thanks, Dom, but I never liked you anyway. I'm with Finn. <laughs> he said no quarter walker, red huggy. Finn Balor is the puppet master, by the way. And I also see a split in the Judgment Day, too. Right. I saw someone say Carlito's been funny in this. He's going to be one of the first ones they bring up, talking about that's cool and that's not cool. Yeah, why is he not a member yet, though? That's that's stupid. He hasn't been patched in. This is like Sons of Anarchy. He's uh, Come he's on, trying bro. to earn his keep. I, I think they kick him out. Jay Uso um, wants to holler. They better be careful with that too. It's just, it's just re oos. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's a T-shirt. It's just re oos. <laughs> and <what> <laughs> he's not feeling this. He says, "Do the water storyline." 
Uh, Finn oh, ain't really? Click. We we Easy we know things. when he's hiding, sliding wow. for Liv. It, look, I'm not a big. You, everybody knows I'm not a big WWE guy, but I think the storyline's okay. From from a like I said, from a fan standpoint, business me is like, ah, don't do oh, this. Yeah. Like I'm yelling internally, like stop it, stop it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tazzy says that's a great prediction, Sean. I was thinking the same thing. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. I'm I'm just thinking outside the box, man. Let's make it. But, I mean, but then again, that's that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> You you know what that means. Ah, McKinney says Carlito hasn't taken care of the Braun Strowman problem, so he's not in yet. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, the defector is Finn. What Finn's hands took that hotel key. That's I just want people to remember. So that. I mean, we can say this on here. Like, I'm not gonna take get make it nasty or anything like vulgar. So the innuendo is that Finn took down Liv with the rookie, or talked with her and set up this plan. Okay. I don't think it has to be that way. You know what? God bless you, Conrad. You, you took it to a much more classy level. There you go. There you go. I'm a classy guy, man. Y'all stay up. Have a great night. Appreciate you, Jesse. You too, man. Um, it's, just, I, it's just re -oose. The match I'm most looking forward to. Oh, shut up. CM Punk. Oh, my God. Here we go. Proves why he was selling T-shirts as well. Him and Drew McIntyre have coordinated the storyline, and it is genius. It is ge the Jungle Boy picture that Drew McIntyre posted was genius. This is elite level trolling, and sometimes deleting it got people to talk even more. Like, oh, that PR must have told them to delete it. Maybe, or maybe they knew. Yeah, if we delete it, more people will talk. They'll think mm -hmm. that we were told mm -hmm. to do this. Punk is a mastermind of playing these little games. He loves this stuff. He loves it. Well. This is a story that I would like to take you back again, Sean. Do you remember SummerSlam 1997? I do very well. Shawn Michaels is the official. Hi, Seth. Seth's probably going to come out in the same biker shorts. And that <laughs> he's probably have a sequence see-through shirt. He needs to come out and do this right. CM Punk's going to come out rocking his... I, I, I would hope he's going to wear the uh, purple... Or whatever Undertaker is wearing, maybe he'll wear some type of Undertaker mm -hmm. tribute attire. Mm -hmm. And Drew's gonna come out and he will play the role of Bret Hart. Now, for those who don't remember, do you remember the stipulation for that match? If Shawn Michaels screws over Bret Hart in the match, Shawn Michaels can never wrestle in the U.S. again. And if Bret Hart doesn't walk out with the title, Bret Hart cannot wrestle in the U.S. ever again. And there was just poor old Undertaker left. Bret Hart hawked the nastiest loogie. Which I'm sure was just in the storyline. He uh, it was a, it was a bit much. It was, but they didn't like each other. He spits in Sean's face, and Sean waffled the Undertaker with the chair, forced the count. He's like one, two, and this is and as soon as his hand hit three, Sean became a heel. Brett is a face, and everybody felt bad for Undertaker, but you should have felt bad for Sean because he was getting beat up after that. This is the same storyline. Drew McIntyre must win this match. He's a CM Punk fan. Ah. <laughs> this is the second time now, Sean, in a one-on-one -on -one match that I'm telling you, CM Punk needs to lose this match. This is what happens. McIntyre needs to win. He deserves it. He McIntyre needs to win, and he also needs to be in a situation where, where Seth Rollins returns to being a heel. As much as I like, oh, 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 oh. Seth Rollins, people are forgetting. Seth Rollins hates CM Punk's guts. And I think the hens come, come home to roost on, on Saturday. I think you have to find a way to keep them apart, <clears throat> though, at the same time. That's not the match now. It's the match at WrestleMania, but we can still start. We can set the table. Correct. You, you're, you're just setting the pieces up. You're just taking out your towel, getting ready to put the silverware on it. That's what you got to do. Uh, what will Seth wear? I already told you. It, it's going to be something wild. Uh, Punk McIntyre, truth be told, this match can go either way. It mainly depends on Seth Rollins, who's the special guest ref, but who needs to win more? Drew. Drew needs to be established. The other two ain't going anywhere. I feel like Drew, I think that's a correct assessment that you and it looks like uh, Quilly make. I think Drew has to win this match. Yeah. Uh, Clown says he thinks Seth screws them both. Ah. Um. 
If Roman doesn't return, Drew CM Punk should be the main event because this match alone sells SummerSlam. This match is going to be epic. And Drew's, it, theme, Drew's theme, Broken Dreams. I don't know if they'll pay for it. I don't know if they'll pony up the money. I don't know what's up with the themes. Like, I couldn't tell you why they don't use certain ones. Disgusting. I'm still mad about Tiffany Stratton. CM Punk's first singles pay-per-view match since uh, Battleground 2013 versus Ryback. Do you remember his last WWE singles match before this? He faced someone who's in a different company, but you'll be shocked to know who it is. Who was it? Billy Gunn on Monday oh. Night Raw. He's just the a butt man. Singles match. Barrel, barrel. <laughs> He's a butt man. Barrel, barrel. I love to love him. By the way, during the Attitude Era, Derek first told me about this song because I missed that Raw where he debuted that song. And Derek was like, yeah, dude, Billy Gunn came out to some country theme about butts. I was like, dude, what are you talking about, bro? I'll never forget that in school. I was like, what? I thought he was lying. Then I went and watched. I was like, oh, no, he wasn't lying. This is He's weird. He's just double S man. Um, Seth's going to fast count punk because he told him your actions have consequences. Oh, I like that, McKinney. Could be. And... Punk's got to remember he's so after Drew that he's making mistakes as well. Is it even a guarantee Punk will make it to WrestleMania? Dude is injury prone. Now we're going to say that about Punk. You know I want to hear it about everyone else. Everyone else who gets hurt, you know, they got people in a bubble. You can't wrestle to the show. (laughs) Come on now. Themes are doo-doo. Themes today are trash dookie, especially Sheamus' new theme. What are we doing? Yeah, that thing, that theme is hot garbage. No comment. Um, Jesse, don't get, Jesse, don't get mad at me. I'm spending the least amount of time on this. Cody wins. I'm not even playing this game. We know what we're all here for, right? Cody wins, Sean? Cody has to win. I hate to say it. Cody wins. All right. We know what we're all here for. This is who everybody wants to come back. You know, I've never in my life, Conrad, put the camera on me, brother. Sorry, Roman. <laughs> I have never... I'm look, look at me, Conrad. I have never thought that I would look forward to seeing Roman Reigns. I mean, I miss Roman Reigns. Lord have mercy. I cannot wait for this guy to get back. I, I've been trying to tell people. I'm t- Bro, Roman Reigns in his absence has almost become more popular than when he was here. Because people are clamoring for him, bro. Like, But anyway, yeah. Like like Quilly said, Cody wins. Nobody cares. John G, welcome back, brother. John Jizzle, what up? No. Uh, to quote Hubs, Cody, no one cares. Yeah, Derek's probably right there with you guys. This is a Diesel Mabel main event. Wow, with a I wouldn't, awesome I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Poor Mabel, man. Vinny's been vicious today, man. I'm gonna pray for you, bro. You know, I feel bad for Mabel though, because Mabel was only what twenty? What was he? Twenty five then? Twenty three? Twenty four? I think. Yep. Yeah, he was just a kid, man. And they were. I've been a king. I, all I'm saying is, let's not forget that. And I love Shawn Michaels, but the Click were bullies back then. If they said you did something wrong, you must have. Yeah. Like, come on, bro. If you weren't in BSK or the Click, you were cooked. Look, I saw SummerSlam '95 on tape. It did look like Mabel dropped his whole body weight on Diesel's back. So yeah. that's not that's not good. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying, did anybody teach him? Like, oh, then he messed up Undertaker's face. Right. Then there you go. Did, did you teach him? Right. Or right. were you worried about your spot? <laughs> there you go. There you go. You can you can see spot run. You can have my spot in the horsemen. Sorry. Good. Not good my sp- promo. Not my spot. Anybody spot? Joe spot. Spot spot. My spot. There <laughs> well well well. <laughs> uh, uh, SummerSlam '95 was doo doo. Matt says it was not a good show. HBK Razor 2 was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Hassan Tahir Show. Thank you. He says, salute. I'm here. Just sub to your channel. Make sure that you guys also sub to Sean's channel. I'm putting it once again in here. Because Thursday, we're going to be right over there at 835 Eastern Standard Time to talk a little bit more. WWE. Oh, yes, sir. It's going on. Uh, Appreciate you, Hassan. Uh, spot, spot him, got him. <laughs> My spot. <laughs> Listen, I, I think that SummerSlam should be good. Um, 
There it'll is a possibility. Show it'll be a good show. There's a possibility we'll be able to do a review for it. We'll we'll hold tight for it. Um, keep an eye on the the EPW channel. We'll see if that pops up. You should know uh, not too long after uh, the Dynamite review this Wednesday at ten ten with me and Derek. So uh, now the rest of the show is really about the people here. Um, for the millions and millions of EPW fans. E- clash of the podcast. Baby. Oh, come on, man. You know what I meant. Tired, tired of correcting you. Let's get to some questions that we've gotten here. Um, Sean, where do you want me to start with these, man? I got the, the block. We, do the ones that were, we should do the ones that were pre-submitted, right? Yeah, we'll start with those. If you guys want to ask questions in the chat, just use hashtag Clash 100, and I'll uh, star them in the meantime. Uh, I'm trying to read this. So Sean got some via TikTok. Marsha via TikTok, Sean, have you ever felt injustice about a pro wrestler like what's happening with Jay Uso for another wrestling in the past? I think she meant to say wrestler in the past. And yes, Booker T. What happened to Booker T in 2003? Pissed me off, and it still pisses me off to this day, and it's part of the reason why I don't like Triple H to this day. You know, and what makes me mad is that's like the one thing he doesn't get mad about. Like, Booker T doesn't get mad about that one, but he'll get mad about Bash at the Beach. I'm like, get mad about that. WrestleMania 19 was disrespectful, bro. It really was. Yeah, but to answer your question, Jey Uso makes me mad, but Booker T makes me madder. Um, Marsha comes in with another one. Conrad, have you ever been so much at someone's defense like you've been over CM Punk or a wrestler in the past? Sean goes over uh, Jey Uso being held back. The answer is no. How dare you, number one? All I can say was, I was right, wasn't I? Yeah, who's the jerks now? Who's the jerks? I'm tired of <laughs> you, it. You've never loved anyone in wrestling as much as you love CM Punk. I'm a CM Punk fan. Mm. There's nothing wrong with that. I, no. I openly admit it. But I will say, I think that there are mis- misunderstandings that happen in pro wrestling. Some of that stuff could be cleared up. How would you feel if you were lied to openly to your face when you were asked? See, so John Cena can get matches changed, but the son-in-law who sits in creative meetings can't. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. That guy's a jerk. He shouldn't have went on a podcast and been disrespectful to the company. The company's disrespectful to him right through his face. Yeah. Yeah. I asked you what I had to do, and you want to lie. James, if James so quit the company like, like CM Punk did, he'd be a massive hit, too. Okay. Let me see here. McKinney. Our He's McKinney, got a McKinney from here. McKinney. Yes. Via Instagram. This is a great question. Okay. So he said, so you made it to heaven, a.k.a. the pearly gate, and thank God you made it to heaven. While you're walking, God says, Sean, now that you are here, I I need to understand more about your love for pro wrestling. So tell me the promo and match that you would say that would make me understand why you love pro wrestling so much. Sunday Night Heat. WrestleMania 15, The Rock, and I know it by heart. Are you ready? Here we go. You come out here and you hold the mic up, Jabroni, for The Rock slaps a taste out of your mouth. You come out here and you spit your little talk about how The Rock comes out and spits his little nursery rhymes. Well, the great one has a little nursery rhyme for you, Stone Cold, and it goes like this. Mary had a little lamb. Well, I'll tell you what, piss on the lamb, piss on Mary, and piss on you. The <laughs> Rock is going to go out there tonight and do what he does best, and then play the SmackDown on your Rudy Poo. Ah, hey, don't do it. Don't do it because The Rock guarantees the to prove to you. You, this goof holding the camera, this chick gawking at The Rock, he will prove to the millions and millions and millions of the rocks fans exactly why the rock is the great one exactly why the rock is the chosen one and exactly why the rock is what i have shadow it out the best damn wwe champ there ever was if you smell ah uh oh philly this ain't sing along with the champ <laughs> if you smell la, 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 what the rock is Okay. When, you said, when you said Sunday Night Heat, bro, I thought you were going to do the Billy Gunn promo. Where, oh, the no, heavens, where the heavens opened up 
And Billy Gunn, you got down on your knees and you said, God, please let me win the king of the ring. And the heavens opened up. And God said, Bob, Bob, my name's, it doesn't matter what your name is. And I was done. Done. By the way, did you notice that both of our references were two rock rock references? On Sunday Night Heat. On Sunday Night, wow. Awesome. There you go, McKinney. Thank you for the question, brother. Uh, let's see here. Clarissa, via Twitter, why do you think Triple H is holding back Jay Uso? Be brutally honest. I, th- I think we've answered that. Yeah, we've, we've answered that. I appreciate the question. I think Triple H plays favorites, and there's a lot more I can say. And tune in Thursday night on my channel, and me and Conrad will talk more about it. Let me see. Am I getting all of these? Hold on here. Okay. I'm just going down in order. I think I've got all of these. Mm-hmm. XG Dub via Twitter. Uh, what do you guys think of an AEW brand split? Would you e- even consider doing it if you are Tony Khan? Go ahead, Conrad. Uh, I don't like the brand split idea. Not for me. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, I just listened to – I think this all came up because Stevie Richards, uh, shout out to him, by the way. He's doing a podcast now, and he kind of split the roster into three separate things. So here's why I've never liked the draft. And, Sean, you can tell me if you completely disagree with this or not. Mm -hmm. When they did it back in 2002, I believe it was, I never liked it because back in the day when we watched, you could see Rock on Raw, you could see Rock on SmackDown. Now you're telling me, no, 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 you're only going to see Rock on SmackDown. Why? Why, why can I only see him once when before I was seeing him twice? You had to write the storylines more cohesively, yep. and now it's just, oh, well, Austin's only on Mondays. And I don't know if that was to make it better for the wrestlers. Maybe it did, and I'm just being selfish, but I don't know. All right. I mean, me and Emily's were talking about this too. Great question by XG Dub. Me and Emily's were talking about this on Twitter. Um, I think a brand split would be good. I think ROH on Saturday night would be good for both, and I think that's what they should do. Really? Yeah, I think ROH, it should be ROH collision. So, uh, did we talk about Death Before Dishonor? I, is there a question about ROH in here? I'm sorry, I didn't look at all of these beforehand. Some of these I know came from here. I guess I guess since we're talking about the brand split, it'll come up. I want to bring this up real quick. Death Before Dishonor, great pay-per-view. I really, really enjoyed it. Ring of Honor doesn't have its own identity. And I think Tony Khan on the media call, and I want to teach you guys something. I want you to learn how to read between the lines with stuff. Tony Khan says, yeah, we, we're not doing a, a huge stadium show. Are you doing the show in the Cowboy Stadium? Are you doing all in there? No, I don't think he's going to do it there. But you know who Tony Khan does work for? The Texas Rangers. Mm-hmm. Their baseball stadium might be free around that time. Why not do the show there? I don't think it's going to be as big in the U.S. because look at their ticket sales right now. Do you want to risk embarrassing yourself if you can't sell out that huge stadium in Dallas? So why do it? Instead, you go there, and that's what you decide to do. Now, also from that media scrum, this is what I took from it, Sean. Ring of Honor. He mentioned it becoming like, you know how NXT pops up when you're looking for it on the channel? It's WWE NXT. What if this is AEW Ring of Honor? You get rid of Rampage, and you make that the show. Yeah, I mean, I don't think so. I don't think that's necessary. I, and, and I was saying this online as well. I think this isn't what we want, though. This is right. what who's giving you the money wants. Right, right, right. I don't think it's necessary. I think the more important thing is splitting them up and making sure that they have an entity in their own. I don't like the fact that you have to pay to watch Ring of Honor. You know what I'm saying? Like, And I think that's what they're trying to get it so that you can have more exposure for it versus yeah. paying for it. Yeah. Like, listen, dude, I love that Dustin Rose and the Von Erich six man. That's just a classic pro wrestling match. Like, it was very basic. It was. And Dustin knows how to get you. I don't know if you've ever heard Dustin give seminars. Shawn Michaels taught me this. When I hit you with the forearm, we're going to lay down. Neither of us make a move till seven or eight. Don't move. He was like, you just lay there. And mm-hmm. then Dustin starts doing the, oh. Yeah. He's just, a, he's a, a joy to watch. A joy to watch. Um. Let me see here. Uh, e says brand split is a marketing gimmick. Bischoff was like to choose WCW or NWO. Forget the WWF is the same idea plus selling ads. Right. Like I said, it, it could it could work if if they wanted it to, but you're gonna have to create huge separation and you're gonna need another world championship. If you were, you could have did AEW Ring of Honor, but now I like. Well, I you said, have a world championship. Briscoe is a world champion. 
Right, but I think that you got to have people super, super invested in it, and I just okay. don't think that the people at Warner Brothers Discovery are ready for it yet. Um, let me see here. Death Before Designer was great. Matt respected Diamante and legit Layla. Yes, I thought they had a fantastic match, a breakout match for both of them. 100. Um, really well done. Death Before Designer was a great show. Yes, Athena, Queen Amanada. AW putting the title on a lot of different people. Shout out to the sister Red Velvet, too. Yes, Hit sir. that final. I was shocked that she won. I was like, Me too. what? Me too. I had no idea that she was going to win. Um, let's go back to these questions here. Uh, actually, Dub, another. I got an old school question. Who do you push in 1984 if Hulk Hogan decided to stay in the AWA? I'm going to you first, Sean. You you got the power. Hogan's not coming. Who do you put? Who do you make the golden era all about? This may be cheating because he wasn't signed until 1985, but I would have held on to Bob Backman for one more year. And then the transition would have made, been made to Macho Man Randy Savage. Full blown, just going with the chic, baby. Hak to break back, make humble for seven years. <laughs> no. Um, I actually think I would have tried to get Dusty Rhodes. Oh, okay. I would have gone with the American Dream Dusty Rhodes. He was pretty on fire at the time. I don't know if he would have went away without the, the stuff, but that's who I think they could have tried to go after. Um, that was an interesting question, actually. It was. I like that one. Uh, going on, M. Leezy, what has been the most fun slash gratifying thing about starting Clash of the Podcast? Um, I wouldn't have called us friends at first because we didn't know each other like that. You have become my friend and my brother. That is my that is the gratifying, most gratifying part for me. Someone hit the Family Matters music. Well, oh. I know it's corny, but I, it's the truth. Um, I love it. I'm going to give a different answer since he, he kind of partook. Um, I think that we became closer friends because of it. I'll say I considered you a friend, right? Um, well, we were, yeah, we were cool, but we became brothers and that's, and that means a lot. I think that we were in a similar place at the same time. So you guys would have to go back. I would say a month or two, maybe three, even before we started clash of the podcast, we brainstormed. We were like, well, what are we going to call the podcast? What are we going to do? How does this make it different than what I do and what you do already? And we were both in a bad place because as much as people probably think, oh, they hate talking WWE. I thought Sean would have been the perfect person to talk WWE. His hatred was not always there for this. Sean will tell you, I was salty way before him about some WWE stuff, about Nakamura. Yeah. You get me and Kyron on a podcast to get real mad real quick about some stuff that they were doing. But Sean was always there to kind of talk me off the ledge, like, hey, listen, bro, it's not that bad. They got some good things going on here. And then we flip it and we come back over here. Then Sean's right there with me. So we're like, yeah, hey, I agree. I agree half the time with some of the stuff. Um, But, yeah, we really enjoyed it. And I think when a lot of people were doubting us or starting to forget about us, it was kind of a reminder instantly, like, nah, these, these brothers got it. They're really, really good. Give them Melissa. And there's not a lot of black podcasts out there that show love, man. You got Grab City. You got a couple other ones, man. But I think this is one of the most chill ones, too. And I think more people should hear about it, man. That's why we're always telling people retweet, show some love, five stars, hook it up. Um, most definitely. I don't, I don't have a lot of friends by choice, real friends. I, guess. I choose my friends very carefully. Conrad Cushman is one of them. And it's because of this show. This show cultivated that friendship, and I'm eternally grateful for that. <laughs> I got to read some comments from people in here real quick. One just made me chuckle. TK has the chance right now to put ROH on TV and give it an identity because Tubi is in the market um, for wrestling after the WWE MLW thing. Maybe. Maybe they do it. Vinny, I put, I just started your question, too. I got five of them in there right now for us. Jake the Snake and Macho Man. Someone said Piper. Piper mm -hmm. wouldn't be a bad choice to pick to uh, put the company around. Was a lot of chocolate and gold on ROH. A very yeah. special episode. Yeah. Yeah, and I love the – we got to do a prequel one, too. There's prequel uh, before everything pro wrestling was everything pro wrestling, too. A lot of people don't know about some of those. Like, I, I we brainstormed and test beforehand, and our brainstorm and test was probably – uh when we did that that rick flair special and then we also did yep. the the you're still gomez to me but vince mcmahon and when he first quit the company mm -hmm. 
-hmm. when it was still in the WWE's hands. So turned out to be a historic moment, you know, a hundred weeks later. Yeah. Most definitely. Um, so thank you for that question, Emily Z. Sarah says, you two black men will change the face of pro wrestling commentary when it's all said and done. I listen on Spotify in Sydney, Australia. Have you both pitched your podcast to any major company or network? I believe your listeners will be very supportive of you both on mainstream radio. Hashtag Clash 100. Um, and that that's was via so, that's, email. That's so okay. nice, man. Wow. Um, I have never pitched... To I anyone have. I have. major, you didn't know that, but I have. I pitched us to Sirius Satellite Radio. I put an application in for us. Yo, Dave LaGreca, what's up, bro? Yeah, I, I, I believe like chat. Let us know, man. I feel like we would be if we crossed over to the mainstream. I think we'd be really good. Right, uh, Guy Will Gamble said the grind with content creating is super real. Big respect to you both for sure. Yeah, it's listen, it ain't easy. Uh, no. And I think this is the last one for the email ones or the ones that Sean gathered for us. Thank you, Sean, by, for yeah, no by doing that. Wrestling Goat 2000 via TikTok. Uh, Sean and Conrad, I've recently heard an older episode where you guys talk about major storylines and history being changed. One, how would you make the Bloodline storyline better? Two, how would you make Evolution storyline better? And three, Sean, I understand. I agree with your anger about Jey Uso being held back in all the episodes I've heard. I think your outlook is the same, which is if you earn a world title, you should have a world title. <laughs> hashtag look at me. Hashtag Clash 100. Congrats on 100 episodes. Cheers to 1,000 more. Um, all right. So Bloodline storyline. How would you make it better, Sean? I think they knocked it out of the park in 2022 and 2023. Um, this current incarnation is not that great. But, you know, it, I mean, Jacob Fatu has made it better. And I don't know. Maybe um, – Maybe what they're about to do, as much as it pains me that, you know, people are not getting their rightful championship opportunity. Um, I think, you know, Jay and Jimmy and Roman and Sammy coming back into the fold. That incarnation of Bloodline is the best there's ever been. And once they're re-implemented, it'll, it'll be better. Um, I'm trying to think of what I would do for the Bloodline storyline. Um. I can't really think of a way to make it better. I'm sure there were things I would have done differently along the way. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I think maybe you could have um, – well, they did a great job with Sammy too and how they implemented him into the storyline. Maybe, maybe feature that – maybe I wish Roman would have started it earlier, like after WrestleMania. Like that could have been the big storyline for Mania, but unfortunately mm -hmm. that's what stopped it, the uh, – pandemic um how would you make evolution storyline better not have triple h hold the title forever um that and i think that having randy orton win it first was was an odd call like it felt like they rushed it too fast you we talk about people not being ready for the world title let's talk about people who were given the world and multiple chances and it's like dude mm. Everyone else doesn't get that, that those chances that he got. Absolutely. But Randy Orton was given the Golden Goose a long time ago. Yep. And while the iron was hot on him, they gave him the title for a month. It didn't work out, but he had it on his resume. Yeah, yeah. And then they kind of de-pushed him a little bit. And uh, Once you're a world champion, you can never have that taken away. You'll always be a world champion. Jinder Mahal will always be a WWE world champion. Jack Swagger will always be a world champion. Jinder Mahal is also the Black Label Pro world champion yes, right yes. now. Yes, he is. Hold it down. Um, I think that was it for those questions. I didn't see any additional. Oh, you had one from IG, or was that what you added in there? That's what I added. Okay. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, let's go to the chat. I started a couple of these here. Hold on. We're going to pull these up. Vinny, the only Vinny we like. SummerSlam Mount Rushmore. Go. Lesnar for sure. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say Lesnar, Austin, Hogan, and for those listening on radio, on on online, you know, audio, I kind of gave a roll of the eyes for Hogan, but Lesnar, Austin, Hogan. And 
Oh my goodness. Lesnar, Austin, Hogan, Triple H. Ooh. Yeah, and that, and that pains me to say that too. I'm going to go with Bret Hart, Brock, Le- uh, Minute Maid. Oh, I almost caught myself there. Minute Maid, man. We can't say his name? I'm not saying his name. Uh, okay. Get him. <laughs> Is he coming back? Who cares? Kurt Angle. Oh. Kurt Angle banger matches in 2001. 02 with Rey Mysterio. 03 with Lesnar. He he always crushed at SummerSlam. Right. So, so. And oh, 04, I, I don't know if I want to. Eh, do I want to? It's between Roman and Cena. Yeah, it's hard to go. I'm, I'm going to give it to Cena because he's got right. more matches in right, right now in the time frame. Good question. Quills, hashtag Clash 100. Kyron and Sean, which storyline did you think was more iconic despite the times? Austin McMahon or the authority Daniel Bryan? Just curious of your thoughts. Um, Authority and Daniel Bryan was a lot of fun. Uh, one of the rare times WWE altered and did the right thing. But Austin McMahon, it's just, it's hard to go again. Austin McMahon was so huge. It changed the industry forever. Yeah. It's the reason why we have authority storylines to this day. <laughs> yeah, so Austin McMahon for sure. And actually, technically, Bischoff probably did it first, the, the authority thing. Yes, but, he did. Yes, he did. But you don't get, you ruined it. You ruined <laughs> it. I'll never forget that horrible punch. Them horrible stunners. Um, but I think Danielson, too, they they fell, or excuse me, Daniel Bryan, they fell into luck that they got a second chance to make that right. Yeah, facts. T Ferg says, Is it true that AEW parted ways with Flair? Did Flair and MJF ever cross paths? TK had three of the original horsemen at one time. Um, I'll answer the uh, AEW parted ways part. Flair's contract with his. Um, his drink, his energy drink ran out, and I think at that point the relationship dissolved from there. Copy that. That's it, what I understand about Ric Flair. I think that tenure with him in AEW was strictly based around the fact that he had that Wu energy drink, and that, that deal, that partnership has since dissipated. Interesting question here. Uh, I got one from McKinney. I just read it on IG. Sorry. Yo, IG is the last place to ever send me messages. I, I agree you. with that because he never checks his Instagram. That's facts. Yeah, it just because it doesn't pop up. It's not. My phone's always on uh, do not disturb. I promise you guys. It's like I'm not lying. What is an episode of Clash of the Podcast where you felt like, oh, we've got something here? I, I there's a couple that spring to mind here. Uh, the first episode with the Triple H uh-huh. and the SummerSlam takeover. Um, you know, I thought we had something with the the whole thing. I actually liked our All Out look as well, where Brawl Out took place. Yeah. Uh, those were some hard times when we were talking about those and CM Punk sadness every week for me. Um, I have to say, the birth of that sounds like a good idea. You know what that means? That was from like the beginning. It was. It was. I, I think that's the day I realized when I saw the reaction from our viewers, I said, okay, yeah, we might we might be on to something. Hold on. I'm pulling up the playlist here too, just so I can make sure I'm not speaking ill of any of these. Let me see here. Where's the videos? And it was by the way, while Conrad looks that up. The you know the, you know what that means was very generic. I mean, very authentic, I should say. It was like I just said, you know, WWE is they're not you know it sounds like a good idea, but you know what that means. WWE is not going to do it, and then all of a sudden it became, you know what that means, and it became like a thing. And Quilly jumped on, and Guy Will Gamble jumped on, and it was like, okay, we got something. We got something. I love some of our work on some of these, like the artwork on some of them too. Yeah. Uh. Just yo off the wall, some of these things that I did, like where it's Seth Rollins with the pink background and stuff. Um, I'm looking Triple H one was a classic. I do love the honorary Oos episode four is kind of a sleeper. Yes, yes. Um, let me look here. We did some classic ones. I loved 
episode eight was a good one. We got a lot of comments on that one. Uh, WWE, AEW, blow ups, buyouts, and breakdowns. Um, talk about did gambles pay off? Let's talk war games. There's so many good ones. I love our predictions ones too. I think those Always are really, good. really fun. Always solid. Uh, blood in and blood out with Sami Zayn finally turning on Roman. Yep. And catching the beatdown of a lifetime. Last year's SummerSlam episode 48. Like, listen, if I knew these off rip, I would yell these out to you guys all the time. Uh, Rob, I'm just starring yours now, too, and we will uh, get to it. I'm sorry for anyone if I'm missing your uh, thoughts here on these. Sean, can you see the starred ones? I can see, yes, I can see close. Had one, we just talked about the storyline. Uh, T Ferg had one. Um, that was the one we just talked about. And now we're down to Vinny? No. No, we're yeah. no, we're on Quills right now. On he has another one. I know this is this question might be dumb, but I'll ask anyway. I know where my mind is. Twenty four oh. hours of Hogan or twenty four hours of Flair watching their, their content. Who would you pick? Oh no. <laughs> is that old school Shaw coming out? Yeah, I, I picked 24 hours of Hogan. I'm not I'm not happy to say that, but Hogan in the 80s was super fun. You know, I mean, his human characteristics aside that we now know as adults, I would watch 24 hours of Hogan before I watch 24 hours of Flair. If you if you give me Hogan, the most iconic clearly to give you some more and Conrad to give you some more context. If you take the most iconic match of Hulk Hogan from the 80s and match it up with the most iconic match of Hogan, of, of Ric Flair from the 80s. Hogan is WrestleMania 3 with Andre. Ric Flair is Starcade 85 with Harley Race. To me, that's that's a no contest. 80, 83, right? Dusty was 80, excuse me, 83, yes, 83. Right. To me, that, that's a no contest. You know, to me, it's like the entertainment value, you know, the, the theatrics. So, unfortunately, I would pick 24 hours of Hogan if that was my only option. I will go opposite. I will go 24 hours of flair. Give okay. me those Ricky the Dragon Steamboat classics. Give me a match with Alex Wright that I forgot about probably. Sting, give me all those matches. I just – I always like the matches flair put on. Um, Versus Rey Mysterio at – Panama City Beach, Florida. Live from Panama City Beach, Florida. <laughs> yes. Um, Vinny, does anyone feel like a SmackDown guy today the way that Taker, Batista, and Angle felt like SmackDown guys back in the day? No. Does anybody feel like a SmackDown guy? Like you belong to that brand. Nah, I, I know what he meant. Um, no, because the brand split is kind of for gazy now. It, the, I mean, Roman, Roman, Roman's a SmackDown guy. Roman only appeared on Raw like three or four times. So I guess Roman Reigns. My answer would reluctantly be Roman Reigns. He's a free agent, technically. Technically, right. But Roman Reigns, he only he only pulled up on Raw like the week of WrestleMania. So. Okay, we got a couple more in here. Uh, Rob, coming in. Question for both of you. A uh, committed gentleman. What is your favorite wrestling moment that brought you closer to your significant other? I was presented a question by my fiance where she said to me, it's about two years ago. She said to me, give me, is there something about wrestling like outside of the athleticism, whatever, like that would draw me in, meaning her as a female. And I turned on the network and I, turned on WrestleMania 7, and I turned on when Macho Man lost to Warrior and Sensational Sherry beat up Macho Man, and then Elizabeth jumped out of the crowd and saved Macho Man, and they reunited, and I could see it, tears coming down my fiance's face. It was beautiful, man. Yeah. It was beautiful. Savage, that was the first time Savage held the ropes open for her. Yep, yep. So... By the way, very untrue. What? That what you just said, very untrue. Well, he did it before. But you know what I, was trying to do I know. A beautiful moment. I'm messing with you. No, but um, real talk. My my girl at the time, fiance now, her tears started running out of her face, and I was like, that right there is why I love pro wrestling. 
and she's like, "Thank you very much." And that what brought that was a wonderful day. Um, for me, I guess I, I won't give a generic answer. But yeah, but uh, you know, when me and my wife sat down and went to see him punk, you know, we knew it was forever. No, 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 that that would not be my answer. My <laughs> wife loves the Usos, the Rock, oh, wow. Roman Reigns. She did like a WrestleMania booth picture with like. I can't remember if it was the Rock or the Usos, but she has like them behind her, like however they had it set up, and she has that framed, like with her at WrestleMania with the title. I was like, "How'd you get a picture holding the title?" I just paid for it over there, and I was like, "I'm not paying for that." But she she loves all of them. Uh, she went to both the WrestleManias with me, but there is a match that I remember that I'll never forget the feeling of being in the arena for. It was a Battlegrounds pay per view in Buffalo, and I always I tell the story: Cody Rhodes. Dustin Rhodes and Dusty, the American dream, if you will, baby. If you will. Dean Ambrose, get over here so I can whip you with my belt. He went out there and Dean Ambrose was running from him. Dusty took off the belt. They told him not to do it because they thought his pants would fall down. He's out there in Buffalo keeping him back. Roman's about to hit the big spear. Seth jumps. He gets caught with the crossroads. Best crossroads Cody ever did. He's like, I got him, Dad. Boom. Knocks him down. He flips over. One, two, and Goldust runs into the ring after the three count, and he's on his knees, and he grabs him. And I'm like, that's brotherly love. That is family love. And that's the one time where the good guys won. Goosebumps. Goosebumps. Yeah. That's my on my rock. On my rock right now. Uh that was a great moment. I just remember everyone being around. It was like a happy, like that's the feeling you're supposed to get from pro wrestling. Yes. Not this, I'm miserable. I can't, and this is me typing on my keyboard. I can't stand the bookie today. That's how you should feel after you watch pro wrestling yes. sometimes. Like, yes, that's a good feeling. So I absolutely love that match. Jesse, write that down. Write that down. I'm just letting you know. Jesse always lets us know when we don't say good things. I said a good thing about Cody right there now. I love that match. McKinney. He said, if you were a wrestler, what's your intro music, your finishing move, and great catchphrase? <laughs> um, Shawn Michaels music, Stone Cold Stutter, yeet. Um, I think I'm, those three encapsulate those three encapsulate my wrestling fandom. HBK, because I love HBK, is my favorite wrestler, and I feel the greatest wrestler of all time. Plus, his name is in the music, uh, which is also my name. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin, I love the stunner. I used to do stunners to people in high school. And yeet, because in the modern day, nobody's a bigger fan of James so than I am. All right. So intro music, honestly, I would probably have someone super dope or myself collab on a music project. Uh, no, nah, I wouldn't do rock. I'm definitely a hip hop dude, more so for that. But if it fits you, it fits you. If it works, it works. Finishing move, I'm definitely coming with the sleeper hold because I'm trying to wrestle for years and I could put that on when I'm 80. Go nice. to sleep. Nice. Go to sleep. And uh, catchphrase, I don't know. I don't know. Huh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Road Duck. I gotta get you. I gotta get you. Um, I don't know. I probably think of something that that that's crazy that that people would fall in love with. You gotta you gotta experiment with that. I talk about you're getting lambasted. I don't know. You'll say something <laughs> crazy. You'll say something. I'll pound you into powder. You know, <laughs> whatever you're gonna think of. You'll come up with something crazy. If if I had to steal one from someone, I'm stealing something from The Rock more than likely. Honestly, the jabroni beaten, oh pie, trailblazing, eyebrow raising. So the intern does taekwondo, right? And I finally realized that his instructor was a wrestling fan. This one family always comes in late. They got a, a little girl, and every time she comes in. They'll, she, they'll ask her questions like, this is what we're doing today. She raises one eyebrow. She doesn't know that she does it. And now when her music hits, it's the rock music. She walks up so slow. And she's like, man, you're really playing up the gimmick that I'm giving you here <laughs> to the kid. I always laugh That's and awesome, think bro. about That's it. Awesome. Always laugh and think about it. So big shout out to them. Uh, someone said, give me D-Lo's music. That's right. You're looking at the real deal now. <laughs> Sky High is my jam. Just sorry, but out on the street. <laughs> Well, I love when D'Lo was from every country, too. He was the first one to start doing that. From Helsinki, <laughs> Phil of Finland. <laughs> That's right. D'Lo made that title mean something. 
Oh, oh man. Good, good times, man. But listen, Raw starting. Did I have a preview for Raw? Probably not. Keep your eye out for the, the TNT contractual rights. Someone's getting sued. Oh, I yeah. told you this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so some money might be coming that way for uh, money, TNT. Money, 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 money. Dude. I matched that Dude. offer. <laughs> Pay up now. <laughs> <laughs> Taking you to court. <laughs> But listen, man, 100 episodes is special. Everybody's got a price. <laughs> that actually might be my theme song now that Everybody's got to pay. Because <laughs> I'm the million dollar Conrad, and you will be bought. <laughs> Uh-oh, Rollins is kicking off Raw. You might have that ref attire. Hurry up and get on there, folks. Sean, take us out of here, man. For episode 100, brother, I thank you. I love you. I appreciate what we've built together so far here. To the next 100 more, let's get it. Conrad, I love you. You're my brother. That's it. I'm thankful, man. God is good. Um, that's it. That's all I can say. 100 episodes. Cheers in advance to 100, 200, 500, 1,000 more. Um I wish you nothing but Godspeed and greatness in your life, and I hope that we can continue taking this ride together, brother. I love you, man. And thank you to the chat. God bless. Be encouraged. Evil never prevails next week. One oh one. And who knows what we'll be talking about. Could even be about Joe Hendry's appearance on NXT this week. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thursday night, 835. Get it. You better be there. It's going to be a fun time. Let's go. Thank you all. Deuces, ooses.